Well, every pony, here we are, a week out from the season five premiere. That means it's last call for us an analyst to get our wish list in order. So let's waste no time and just jump right in. Warning: there are some minor spoilers ahead. If you've seen the preview art or the uh, trailers, you probably know what's coming. If not, then you've been warned and you should probably turn away right now. Number one, I want my Shadow Bolts story. Damn it. Give it to me. Number two, Apple Bloom Dream Episode. This one is pretty much a given, considering we've had the other two in the past two seasons. We know the formula by now. A CMC has some issue with their sister figure. Luna visits their dreams and guides them to a solution. The curious thing is going to be seeing what sort of problem Apple Bloom could have with Applejack that would warrant Luna's involvement. Number three, the CMC get their cutie marks. Okay, so I jumped the gun last season with thinking Scoots was going to get hers. But with S Sweetie Belle apparently trying out for an American Idol uh, style singing competition this season, I'm convinced at least one of them will get their mark this year. Although I must say, from the preview image I saw, having rarity on the judging panel, nepotism is a thing in Equestria? Having vinyl and Octavia there is fine for me and makes sense. But instead of rarity as a judge, why not have neon lights? Number four, Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon development. I'm not sure how likely this is in the series proper. They may leave this up to the comics crew, like with the DT and SS feature in next month's Friends Forever. But damn it, is it ever needed! I mean, it, it's not like they can go much further after making DT make fun of Scootaloo for being a cripple last season. A move that forever cemented her in my mind as worst pony. I'm not asking for an overnight reformation here. Let's just start with focusing on Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon themselves first. What do they do when they aren't being bullies? No bully is ever like that 100% of the time because we all have multiple masks that we wear depending on circumstances and mood. Show me if they have a relationship just beyond ringleader and lackey. Show me if there's a solid foundation behind their interactions. Show me if they're really friends. After that, here's my idea for a good Diamond Tiara focused episode. After the usual shenanigans, Filthy Rich is made aware of Diamond Tiara's actions and decides to sit her down and talk to her and ask her why she specifically hates Apple Bloom. Because if we really examine what's going on, DT's actions all started because of Apple Bloom. Sweetie Belle and Scoots have always been collateral damage and just guilty by association. Have him reiterate to her that their families are tied together through a business partnership many, many decades old that ties directly into the founding of Ponyville itself. Have him remind her that it's very likely that in 30 years time, it's going to be Diamond Tiara and Apple Bloom carrying on this partnership. Have him tell her that it's not wise to publicly humiliate and denigrate your fucking business associates. And let's get some answers to this. Number five, Gala episode. This year is going to see the return of the Grand Galloping Gala, this time with Discord in attendance. What I really want from this is a lot of Fluttercord shippiness. Since that's not likely to happen, also for Discord plays, plays pranks, chaotic hijinks ensue. Add in a little, rarity humiliates blue blood and we're golden. Number 6. Returning characters. Last season saw the introduction of a bunch of new characters. Some that are really worth revisiting. I especially want to see the return of Cheese Sandwich and some more delicious cheese pie. There's also a lot of older characters I wouldn't mind seeing back. From Babs and Trixie to Gilda and Chrysalis, there's some real possibilities there. Number 7. 
Rainbow Dash the Wonder Bolt. Last season saw Rainbow Dash fulfill her lifelong dream of becoming a Wonder Bolt. Sure, as a reservist, she's not flying with the main team yet. But she does own that jumpsuit and can be called upon at any time. Something used already in the Friends Forever comic. Besides that, being a Wonder Bolt now allows Rainbow Dash to have more personal interactions with Spitfire, along with Soren and Fleetfoot. Rumor has it that one of the episodes is going to be an episode where Spitfire considers quitting the team and giving the captainship to Dash. While I do think this is where their arc is going, I think it's still way too early for that. And I think Dashie would agree with me. She just became a reservist. I know she'd feel like she hasn't proven herself yet, and probably feel that either Fleetfoot or Soren would deserve the position of head of her based on seniority. That's something you save towards the end of the series, and I hope it doesn't happen yet. But having her interact with the others? That I want to see a lot of. Number 8. Big Matt gets a legit speaking part again. Just please f make this fucking happen. Don't give us any more teases with it. It annoys me. It annoys me to no end. I think it's disrespectful to the character. I think it's insulting to our intelligence as fans. Let the man speak. He is one of the few major male characters we have in this series. Number 9. Episode 100. Rumor is that for the 100th episode special, we're getting a story fleshing out some of the background ponies. Some will have much of their fanning canonized, others will have canon created for them wholesale. I'm curious to see who gets what of their fanning canonized. I think Derpy will be the easiest to do this with. She's unbelievably popular and always has been. They made a big deal out of bringing her back last season. And her fanon is quite extensive with large chunks of it already canon. They've already established her as a sweet, innocent, caring, enthusiastic, naive, clumsy but well-meaning, and, and also acknowledge her as being aware of her faults and able to shrug them off, and having some involvement in a delivery service of some kind. All that's left to do is canonize her as Dinky's mom and Dr. Hooves' companion. Everyone is probably thinking Lyra should be next on the list. While this isn't Korra or Steven Universe, and hence they probably can't confirm her and Bonbon bon as a couple, though they certainly got hinted at it in uh, the Equestria Girls' uh, second movie, they could establish them as roommates and canonize that she's kind of quirky and has that obsession with humans. I'm not sure they'll do that with her, though. The human obsession might be a little past the point of fan service into just outright pandering. It's literally jingling keys in front of us and expecting us to go, Ooh, shiny! What they'll probably do is canonize her and Bonbon bon as roommates, and make her part of the Royal Cantalot Orchestra alongside Octavia as their harpist. There's also the possibility of Dr. Hooves being canonized as a Time Lord, since it seems the BBC has took notice of his being drawn from David Tennant's Doctor and seemingly being actually pretty okay with it. But I'm not convinced of that either. More likely is canonizing him and Derpy as partners but having him just be Time Turner, Ponyville's resident and master clockmaker. No, I think the most likely to have their fan engrafted on after Derpy are Octavia and Vinyl. Vinyl, the hard partying, fun loving, excessive DJ. Octavia, the prim, proper, reserved cello goddess. Combined, the odd couple roommates that even they don't know how they work together, but they do. Number 10. A new style of villain slash recurring villain. Let's face it, Tyrick killed the trope of the supernatural other as a legit villain last season. At least in terms of the two-parters. After the balls out 
fucking awesomeness he provided. Any other use of that character type for the big episodes is going to seem tame in comparison. Instead, we're getting a new style of villain to open with. Starlight Glimmer is an internal political threat, preaching a message of Cutie Marks being an elitist threat to equality and with the magical ability to take them away. Basically, we're getting a female version of Amon from Legend of Korra. I'm curious to see what they do with her, and I hope she's a recurring threat throughout the season, since we've not had that yet. I'm also curious to see if she relies completely on magical mind control, or if she has convincing rhetoric to back her up. Number 11, Starlight Glimmer targets the CMC. I find it odd that in the preview material, we only see adults in Sunlight Glimmer's little commune. That doesn't feel right to me. Adult ponies would, I imagine, be more critical of her message and resistant to her magic because they've had cutie marks all their lives and those mean something to them. If I were her, do you know what I, who I would target? The foals. The blank flanks. Those that have been bullied for not having their cutie marks yet. Those are the ponies that would be susceptible to that kind of message because they would already legitimately feel oppressed by those with cutie marks. So before w one of the CMC gets their marks, I can easily imagine an episode where Sunlight Glimmer targets them. That also changes the stakes for the main six from simple political ones to extremely personal ones. And number 12. Lastly, here's my big prediction for the season. Starlight Glimmer is Sunset Shimmer's mom. Let's really look at it closely and it won't be as shocking as it seems. In terms of design, both have big main styles and multi-tone main coloring. Second of all, she seems like the kind of character that can manipulate ponies to follow her. And when she can't, I got a feeling she resorts to violence and intimidation. Lastly, have you considered why prior to Rainbow Rocks, Sunset was a very Nietzschean will to power type? Well, imagine you've grown up your whole life in an environment that's told you that if you're different, if you're individual and embrace your unique talents, you're basically evil. That you must conform or else you're the enemy. Imagine how powerless you must feel in that environment. How scared you are to reveal that you do have a special talent. Why don't you thirst for that power you've never had or never been able to uh, express? Also, why don't you isolate yourself from the impersonal mob and become very antisocial? It would also explain her bitterness towards Celestia. In Celestia, she had found a secondary mother figure that encouraged her to explore her talent and embrace her individuality, only to withdraw her support once Sunset started showing how overly ambitious she was becoming. It would also certainly explain that line in the Holiday Special comic where Sunset mentioned that even before coming to the human world, she wasn't close to her family. Also, it would allow for the use of the journal. That's a powerful tool to have. A device that lets Twilight be in the EQG universe without needing to create continued contrivances to enter the portal, but one that also allows the introduction of Sunset into Equestria proper without her having to physically be there. Starlight Glimmer being Sunset's mom would allow for some use of that device. So there you have it. Here's what I'm hoping to see out of this season. We're going to have six months to see how it all pans out and I'm sure it's going to be a fun ride along the way until next time